I'd like to call the Region 15 Board of Education meeting to order. Could you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Uh, student representatives, um, please, Nick and um, Erin. Good evening, everyone. First off, on Friday, April 18th, National Honor Society held a Red Cross blood drive here at Pomperog. Students over the age of 17 and teachers donated blood and red blood cells. Also, Pomperog Robotics competed this weekend in Providence, Rhode Island for the second regional first competition. They reached 10th place after qualification matches, and they did not make it past quarterfinals, but still did extremely well overall. Next, they will attend New England's on April 13th in Hartford, Connecticut. Also, on, April, on Friday, April 1st, that's this Friday, from 7 to 10 p.m., NHS will be hosting the annual Dodgeball for Diabetes Tournament. Awards will be given to the winning team and the team with the best costumes. All proceeds from the night will be given to American, the American Diabetes Association. Uh, thank you, that's all for me, and here's Nick. Prom will take place on June 5th at the Aqua Turf in Plantsville. Tickets are on sale from April 6th to the 29th. It's gonna be a fun event and we're all very excited about it. Uh, the Run with the Panthers 5K will take place on Saturday, April 2nd. Registration begins at nine and the race starts at 10. The $25 fee includes a t-shirt and entry into the raffle. Uh, proceeds benefit the class of 2017. Thank you. Any questions of our student representatives? Okay, there being none, thank you. Uh, presentations, um, student recognition, Mrs. Botsford and Mr. Velarde, please. Madam Chair, it is, it is a great honor and privilege to announce that our boys swim team has won the state class M championship this year and that it is their 10th consecutive win and 16th win overall. So uh, great congratulations to the entire team. And Mr. Velarde will come up to the podium and say a few words about uh, their hard work and their many, many successes. Thank you, and we'll proudly display the state championship plaque in our trophy case. In honoring our boys' swim team, we are recognizing two facts. One is their great accomplishments for this season, and the other is that they are part of a continuing succession of champions. One thing that every teacher and every parent tells their kids is do your best. When the team came back from their training in Florida, I had a talk with Fran and just asking him how it went. And he said that it was good, but the afternoon sessions weren't as strong as the morning workout sessions. So I said, you mean they didn't have as much energy in the two and a half hour afternoon section as they did in the two and a half hour morning session? And so I was just trying to lighten the mood. But his response was, well, why can't they have a great workout every time? And then something about, if we want to reach our goals and our expectations and have the best quality program around, we would want to do everything we can to, can to be outstanding every time. Of course, Fran is right. What separates good from great coaches, teams, students, and people are their level of self-expectation. The single most valuable quality that comes from participating in high school athletics is that some people learn that they can have high expectations of themselves and that those expectations are an everyday thing, not a sometimes thing. State champions 10 years in a row is unheard of. More than that, the qualities they learn about how hard and how well they work will carry them throughout the next 50 years and will affect everyone they touch in their lives. So it would be my pleasure to introduce the team to you. Um, and team members, when I call your name, if you would just give a wave so everyone could see who you are. Mohammed Abdul, Colin Anderson, Jason Anderson, Sean Bannon, Gregory Brockett, Luke Bonasso, Connor Burke, Michael Burke, Jacob Byrne, Benjamin Cernak, Henry Cernak, James Cummings, Ryan Kuzak, Colin DeLeo, 
John Dennis, Zach Demiglio, Jack Dolan, Ben Donahue, John Feller, John Fomano, Eric Gow, Jack Gibbons, Nathan Gibson, Lachlan Gowan, Patrick Holland, Gabriel Holmes, Robert Holmes, Henry Hugh, Thomas Jensen, Andrew Kelbley, Ian Keller, Matthew Korber, Matthew Kowalski, Arbor Culla, Christopher Lewis, Colin McKellar, Ian McKellar, Jordan McDerrin, Daniel McNamara, Sean Mellinson, Robert Miller, William Miller, Robert Moore, Jack Murtori, Zachary Nevers, Cameron Obar, Dominic Papiro, Haley Perrin, Noah Peters, Cole Fanouf, William Regan, Charles Rosinski, James Rosinski, Cole Rosenhain, Eric Rogenhain, Liz Sankey, Michael Savoyski, Michael Shockey, Riley Shea, Christopher Shortell, Alexander Solod, Gwendolyn Strickland, Steve Sullivan, William Sullivan, Kim Thaleen, Benjamin Thiriol, Matthew Widlar, Tyler Williams, Michael Windover, Tyler Zinko, Diving Coach McClintock, Volunteer Coach Famagletti, Assistant Coach Burgess, and Head Coach Fran Pantino. We are the Southwest Conference champions, the State Class M champion, and the State Open runner-up. Congratulations, boys. And I'd like to, and I'd like to just invite Coach Pantino to say a few words. I wasn't overly prepared to speak tonight, but a couple thoughts that I had. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting us here. It's great to have uh, the boys recognized for uh, such a remarkable achievement. And like Mr. You know, Velarde said, uh, ten in a row, and it's actually uh, 15 state titles. Um, but 10 in a row is pretty unprecedented uh, in, in whatever sport it is, whether it's swimming or football or wrestling, you know, that's uh, very unheard of. Probably one of the things I'm most proud of, and I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, uh, Mr. Velarde, I was actually Mr. Velarde's first hire 23 years ago, so uh, I think he made an okay choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I started coaching, we had 17 kids in the team. And I would say for the past 10 years or so, we've boasted of well over 50 kids. And I honestly don't even know how many kids are on the team. You know, it's probably all of 60. So that's probably one of my, uh, what is it, 68? 68 uh, swimmers, divers, and one gal uh, that joins us as well. So um, that's probably one of my most uh, uh, proud um, accomplishments, you know, growing the team, you know, to uh, make it a place where kids that maybe aren't athletes in other sports have uh, an opportunity to come out for a team. And I often have kids that swim all four years that don't ever actually even compete at the state championship level or even at the league championship level. And the fact that they stick it out is a, you know, is a great accomplishment. But um, with that said, the boys are certainly very lucky to be, uh, you know, to grow up in a community like this where, uh, you know, there's a lot of support and uh, parental support and academic support and staff, uh, you know, really cares for them. So uh, hopefully the boys, uh, you know, uh, and, and Gene, you know, recognize uh, what a great community that they're a part of. So uh, thanks for recognizing us this evening, and um, we'll see if we can be back here again next year. Thank you. Coach, Coach, would you, would you please mind um, bringing the other two coaches up here and the captains of the swim team so we can shake their hands? Sure, come on. They can represent um, the whole swim team. So our four captains are uh, James Cummings, Cole Rosenheim, Riley Shea, John Feller, and then Lee McClintock is our diving coach, and Coach Brendan Burgess, who's also the girls' coach. Uh.
And swimmers, I know that in addition to being wonderful, superb athletes, you are also wonderful, superb scholars. So if you would like to make your exit so that homework can be done this evening, we would all be um, in favor of that. Thank you. Okay, now here comes the fun part. I'm going to ask um, Mr. John Cookson and Mrs. Jennifer Connolly to join me up at the podium so we can um, present um, uh, the school budget. Thank you. couple seconds here. Okay, before Jennifer, John, and I begin the budget presentation, I need to acknowledge and thank several people. The budget process begins for the next year almost as one has passed. We began this school year with special education costs that were unanticipated. Several students moved into the region over the summer. These students needed and deserved the best we can offer. Because of this, we needed to go into a soft budget freeze early in the school year. We cannot continue operating a school system under these restraints. Our superintendent has met with all our administrators to find cost-cutting measures. Some are staff reductions, as you will see in the budget presentation. Our superintendent recommended a 2.86 increase for this year at our February 29th Board of Ed meeting. At the first budget workshop on March 9th, the Board of Ed asked for further reductions and to add to the contingency fund for special education. Mrs. Botsford presented at the second workshop held on March 16th her recommendations of a 2.58% increase and added money to the contingency fund for special education. A majority of Board of Ed members present agreed to move forward with a 2.58 increase. There was also further questions about re reducing staff at the high school. At the third budget workshop held on, on March 22nd, Mrs. Bosford and Mr. Lungarini gave a thorough explanation of the impact on class size if further reductions were made in staffing. And I'm sorry, I have a cold, so I'm a little squeaky. Putting a budget together is a monumental task. We do our very best to be fiscally responsible to the citizens of Southbury and Middlebury while maintaining the standards we expect for our children. I would like to thank all our administrators, Mr. McLiberty, Mr. Gussenberg, and Mrs. Botsford for all their hard work. Now for the budget presentation. Region 15's mission statement commits us to excellence for every student. The budget that the board presents tonight is our investment in the future of our children. It represents decision making made in the best interest of our students and balanced by responsible spending. We owe our students the best education that we can afford. On September 1st of this school year, the Region 15 Board of Education approved a long-term district goal designed to promote the kind of 21st century learning that is required for all our students. <coughs> this work is already in process and will guide the district's direction for the foreseeable future. There are six learner expectations embedded within this long-term district goal. Collaboration, critical thinking, communication, 
innovation, character, and global citizenship. Now I'll turn it over to Jen. The 2016-17 budget investments. These are some areas of investment that were in the superintendent's proposed budget and they remain in the board's proposed budget. Technology, textbooks, a new course at the high school, new lab interfaces at the high school, and new wrestling mats. We'll start with the first one, technology. Providing up-to-date technology is required for our students to keep pace with the world in which they are growing into. Last year, the board began a regular replacement plan for technology. This plan must continue if we are to maintain current and reliable equipment and internet access. Next year, we will need to replace additional laptops and desktops that are beyond their usable life. We will be leasing this equipment with no, no dollar impact to next year's budget. We will also be able to complete the upgrade of the infrastructure that we began this year. We will be able to do that in the largest part through a competitive grant for which we applied and which we were awarded. So again, there's no dollar impact to next year's budget for the wireless upgrade. Replacement of switches and servers completes the infrastructure upgrade with a total, total dollar impact of $73,000. Math textbooks for grades four to five. Last year, the board approved a new textbook for elementary mathematics. You may have heard of the Bridges program. That impl implementation has been highly successful this year in grades K through three. Next year, that impl implementation will continue to grades four and five at a cost of $62,835. Math textbooks for grades six to eight. A committee of teachers and administrators has completed a careful review of middle school math texts and a recommendation for a text will be coming before the board shortly. This budget includes $80,000 to provide hardcover text for use in school and internet access for use at home. This budget also funds a new social studies course for PHS called Global Problem Solving. No textbooks will be purchased for this course. Instead, students will use internet-based resources for research government, nonprofit, and community organization websites, newspapers, library databases, and so on. The cost for implementation covers curriculum writing, professional development, and teacher resources. We need to purchase a new textbook for AP Biology. Based on a careful review of options by a committee of teachers and administrators, the text that you see above was approved by the board. As we always do, we consider any fiscal efficiencies that might be realized by buying electronic textbooks. In this case, the less expensive option over the 10 years expected for the use of this text is to purchase the hardcover text, which come with a six-year license for the electronic text. The cost is $8,018. This budget includes an allocation for new interfaces that would be used in chemistry and physics labs to collect and analyze experimental data. The cost is $5,588. The current wrestling mats in the practice room at PHS are damaged as a result of over 10 years of normal wear and tear and they can no longer be repaired. Wrestling mats must be intact so they can be properly cleaned for health reasons and this is no longer the case for ours. Therefore, the budget includes an allocation for replacing them at a cost of $12,000. In this slide, you will see the six-year budget increase overview. The board's proposed budget for this year, again, is for a 2.58% increase over last year. board met in three workshops after our superintendent proposed her budget. During those workshops, <coughs> the majority of the board was in favor of presenting the superintendent's proposed budget reduced by 
Here you see the reductions recommended by our superintendent that total the amount. None of these <coughs> reductions impacted classrooms or teaching. In addition, the board also required a reallocation of funds within the superintendent's proposed budget to increase the unanticipated special education contingency <coughs> from 100 to 300,000. This reallocation had no effect on the total amount of the superintendent's proposed budget. Here you see our superintendent's recommended reallocation to cover the increased special education contingency of 300,000. <clears throat> Here's a breakdown showing the overall budget impact of the board's reduction to the superintendent's proposed budget. The board's proposed budget is <clears throat> 66, 949, 335 million, a 2.58 increase. The board has reduced the superintendent's budget by 180, $810,000, reducing the increase from our original 2.86 to 2.58. <clears throat> the budget presented a number of unique challenges and I thank the board and our superintendent for working together to bring a responsible proposed budget forward. <clears throat> Increased fixed costs, salaries, and tuitions. Impact of rigorous cost-cutting measures in previous budgets. Spending freeze for the past three years. Unanticipated increased special education costs. Decreased excess cost grant allocations and maintaining excellent service. The items listed <coughs> as secondary budget drivers are those improvements that we discussed earlier. Here are the cost saving measures that responded to our budget challenges. Self insurance, one million saved annual beginning 2013-14 Excellent history in our current year allocation for no budget increase in medical lines next year. <clears throat> Conversion from oil to natural gas at PHS and RMS, $150,000 saved over the last three years. Wireless network grant, <clears throat> cost avoidance of $840,000, $250,000 in the 216-17 budget. Retirement incentive, saving $390,000 in 2016-17 budget. Here is an overview of the enrollment and staffing. You can see that in the past three years, 17 teaching positions have been reduced. <clears throat> Here is an overview of the current enrollment by level. Elementary on the top middle school in the center, and high school on the bottom right. Staffing at our elementary schools will remain the same next year. Middle school staffing will be reduced by 2.2 FTEs, and the high school staffing will be reduced by 2.2 FTEs. And <clears throat> this will give us a total of 20.2 FTEs over four years. <clears throat> the staff reductions at the middle school and high school levels that we looked at at previous slides are coming from several departments <clears throat> across schools, and they reflect a careful analysis of enrollment by course for next year. The net result is a reduction of 3.2 FTEs. Next year, we must provide an additional self-contained class high-need special education stu students, so you see a necessary increase of one special education teacher, and the budgetary impact of this increase will be more than offset by cost avoidance in the area. In 2014-15, <clears throat> we had cut allocations for outside school psychologist service at PHS we now need to restore that service cut in this budget <coughs> that by increasing our FTE 
by 0.4. Of course, the balance that needs to be struck in a budget is weighing the board's mission to maintain an excellent 21st century education for the children of Middlebury and Southbury against the board's physical responsibility to our communities. One way to assess physical responsibility is to look at comparative data among districts. And to do that, the State Department of Education calculates com <coughs> comparative spending. This particular set of data, net current expenditures per pupil, <coughs> establishes an equitable database with which to compare per pupil costs among local and regional boards of education. These are objective data that are helpful as an indicator of comparative spending. And that indicator sheds objective light on physical efficiency. The most, the most recent data available are from 2014-15. And, and those data show that Region 15 spending was in the bottom half of all districts statewide. Ms. Perry? Excuse me, Ms. Perry, before you begin. Uh, Mr. Cookson, I apologize to you. I, there was one correction I would like to make. It was my error in the information that I had given you. Um, the, the correct information is that middle school staffing is being reduced by 2.2 FTEs, and high school staffing is being reduced by 1.0 FTEs. The total FTE reduction for classroom teachers is 3.2, and that's between the middle school and the high school together. I do apologize, Mr. Cookson. That was my error. Everyone clear around that? Okay, so it's spending in the bottom half of all districts in the state and the request that the board will ultimately make to our voters to invest in education, it is also fair to ask, what return on our investment have we been getting? And the answer is a very high rate of return. Standardized test result consistently are above state average and consistently competitive with similar districts. Two to students named as national merit finalist last year and this year. 71 students named as AP scholars or higher in 2015, and PHS was number one, yes, in state and language arts and fourth in the state in math in 2015. Here is how we compare last year with our advanced placement test results and our SAT results. And in both cases, you can see that the data points are very, very strong. Okay. From the class of 2015, over 90 percent of our students indicated their plans to go on to college. Here is a sample of college's acceptance for the class of 2015. And here you can see Barnard, Carnegie Mellon, Cornell, Fairfield, University of Connecticut, James Madison. I won't go through the whole list. You can read as well as I. Now I will turn it over to Jen. It's important to recognize that this budget proposes no cuts to services or programs for students. Particular examples of exemplary services, programs, and practices that will continue to provide for our students are listed here. Full day kindergarten, SRBI services for students who are experiencing academic difficulty, ongoing curriculum revision, updating of classroom and school library materials, continuation of the Digital Learning Academy, and advanced placement courses at the high school, continuing to update technology and maintaining reasonable class sizes. In addition, in addition to maintaining those exemplary programs and practices, this budget provides for the new initiatives and improvements you've heard about tonight. They've already been discussed, but here you see the financial impact of the improvements all in one place. 
This slide shows the total budget by object. The total budget amount is $66,949,335. This budget amount is net of expected non-tax revenue, meaning all state and federal grant funds have been applied. This graphic shows the proportional distribution of the total dollar amount of the proposed budget by object codes, salaries, insurances, transportation, instruction, purchase services, facilities, tuition, and debt. It's significant to note that the only object in the budget that is discretionary is the instructional object, and that is less than 3% of the total budget. All the other objects are driven by contractual or other obligated costs. The next slide you are reviewing, this table shows a comparison of the proportional share of Region 15's budget that will be the physical responsibility of each town. The proportional share is based on the proportion of students that Region 15 educates from each town. By law, the calculation is based on the enrollment on October 1st of the previous year. You see that middle Valley proportion is increased one half of 1% and South Perry share is decreased by that same amount. Here is the detail that identifies where the budget increases are going for a total increase of 2.58. In particular, you can see that the salary increases as they are offset by the reduction next year of 3.2, is that number correct? 3.2 FTEs and buy the savings from the retirement incentive. You can also see <clears throat> the special, the additional special education costs reflect in transportation and tuition lines. Ms. Perry. Okay, here is the budget summary. This budget replaces aging technology. It provides new math texts for the elementary and middle schools. It funds a new course and textbooks at the high school. It provides new interfaces for science labs and new wrestling mats. All efficiencies and initiatives from prior years are continuing, and this year we are making a savings from the retirement incentive, and we have no increase in health benefits. We are funding our fixed cost, we are maintaining reasonable class size, and we have included funding for unanticipated contingencies with a total, total budget increase over last year of 2.58. Here is the calendar of the next steps in the budget process. Later on tonight's agenda, the board will hear public comments, and the next opportunity for public comment will be next Monday at the public hearing prior to the board's adoption of the budget. I encourage you all to get out and vote on May 4th and see you next Monday night, the 4th in this room at 7.30. Thank you for your patience and your time. And thank you to Jennifer and John with your help. Okay, I need an approval for the minutes of the March 14, 2016 regular meeting, please. Approval of the minutes for the March 14, 2016 regular meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Any corrections, omissions, or additions? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous, thank you. Information and proposals, board um, committee reports. Mr. Babrick is not here, so there's no report. Thank you. Policies and Curriculum Committee, Mr. Suriani. Thank you, Madam Chair. PNC met on February 29th. Uh, 
a new textbook, a PHS AP Biology, was reviewed. Mrs. Szymanski and Mr. McGee reviewed the changes that had been made in AP Biology by the AP College Board. The cor course has recently been revised by the AP College Board. Our present book used in that class is over 10 years old, and the board requires the College Board requires materials be no more than 10 years old. Mr. McGee described the book and associated materials. The recommended book before us tonight for approval was one of five reviewed. The book is copyrighted 2017 and comes with ebook access for six years. At the same meeting, the board also um, reviewed policy 5143, student field trips. Uh, the policy was before the board because it was 10 years old and we tend to review those every 10 years. Uh, it was noted that the policy by Mr. Gussenberg that the policy and administrative regulations contain some inconsistencies. Uh, the committee, we, as a committee, we discussed a variety of issues, such as insurance for canceled trips and liability issues, and it was suggested that the committee members review the materials, and it will be on a subsequent agenda for PNC. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, is there a um, PTO advisory? No. no report. Thank you. Board member comments. I have one. Oh, oh, go ahead, Sharon. Because no <laughs> I needed a few more minutes to frame my thoughts, but, uh, <laughs> but that's all right. I'll just wing it. Uh, so I just, I, looking through here, this is really going to be the, uh, the agenda, the only time, I think, to, for, for the board to comment on the budget presentation before next Monday. And I just wanted to, for the, um, the community, I wanted to just point out that as a board member, I review other budgets from other uh, Derg B or similar districts uh, to see you know what what they're doing. Uh, uh, most other districts have similar increases. In fact, I think ours is one of the lowest. Uh, they all mention the same issues: decreased state funding, increased special ed costs, contractual salary obligations. Uh, you know, I see a lot of things that I think we should aspire to. I see Cheshire's introducing Spanish in the elementary school. Simsbury's offering Chinese. Uh, last year, Region 14 offered one-to-one uh, -one devices. So, I, you know, and this in, in Region 15, I feel we've we've lagged behind in math text purchases. I think that's that's hurt us. Uh, last week, we reviewed class sizes at Pomparag High School, and what I saw was that many of our majority of our classes had easily 23, 24 kids or more in them. Again, this is high, I think, compared to many similar districts. So I feel whether a family moves to Region 15, whether you move here today or you moved here five years ago or 20 years ago, you do so with an expectation that your kids will get the education that's advertised, that was advertised in that presentation. You know, whether it's a shot at those AP courses or the SAT scores. Once your kids leave the school system, I think you expect the quality of education to remain the same so that the quality of the towns and the character of the towns remains the same and just to put it in numbers because you expect the home, home values to remain the same. Uh, so I do feel that personally, I've, as, for my own self, I feel I've already compromised with the budget coming down to the 258. Um, we certainly need uh, more technology. Uh, I'm almost now concerned about class sizes. Um, so I feel to cut any lower with this budget puts the quality of the district in jeopardy and that is why I would support the two the two five eight when it comes time. Thank you. Yeah, Steve, I would definitely echo um, your comments. Um, you know, working with the the budget workshops, there was you know a lot of back and forth between board members as there should be. But one one concept that came up was that you know I, I want to fund innovation. I want to fund new things and. Um, this got me to thinking and really looking back over at least my tenure on the board and people who have been here um, longer, which actually, Pat, I think that's, that's only you. Sorry about that. But, you know, it's, it's really important to continue to fund what we do and we do well here. And in light of that, we've also in the last two or three years brought on, you know, full day kindergarten, the SRBI, um, ongoing upgrading, updating and upgrading of curriculum and textbooks very, very important. Updating our library materials, Digital Learning Academy, Advanced Placement Courses, AP, committing to up-to-date technology. That was a big nut for us to crack. 
and doing this all at reasonable class sizes. And then this year, continuing that plan for technology upgrades and new textbooks and uh, replacing worn out athletic equipment and new lab equipment interfaces. And I, I think it was really important to put in the contingency fund uh, for the special education because that's cost us um, in, in other areas. And to do all that, staying away from cuts to the classroom, I think is really a phenomenal task that the administrators came to do. Um, it might not be, uh, might not sound like real innovation or really sexy things to be bringing in, but you know what? They're important to keep the excellence of this school district. So while I was also in favor of the 2.86, I think bringing it to the 2.58 was nothing less than a miracle with um, staying away from cuts to the classroom. And I do agree with you also, Steve, that the class sizes are high and it really does matter. Um, and um, that's all I may have more to say at our, uh, our next budget hearing. Thanks. Um, I, I also echo Steve and Sharon's comments. Um, and I'm definitely gonna have more to say ne again next week. Um, but I wanted to talk about um, the workshops uh, that we've had um, to correct a misperception that was out there. Um, Region 15 does have a reputation for excellence in the state and we want to keep it that way. And I'd like to thank Mrs. Botsford and Mr. Gussenberg and Mr. McLiberty um, for their help with the budget. We've had many budget workshops and each of them have contributed to my determination that this is a sound budget. Um, I'd also like to thank Mr. Bernardi, Dr. Seiler, and Mr. Longarini who attended the workshops to further explain the class arrangements at the middle and high schools. It's not easy to understand the complicated scheduling system at these schools, but you helped the board understand your needs and you spoke with authority and reason. And I left those workshops very satisfied that we cannot make further cuts to this budget without impacting education. Um, the workshops were not easy and there were many tough questions that were asked, but those questions were answered and this budget has become stronger throughout that process. Um, as a result, a majority of this board, including members of Southbury and Middlebury, support a 2.5% increase. We have high expectations of student performance at Region 15, and we need to make sure that the educators have the tools and the support they need to help our students thrive. Thank you. Any other board member comments? One comment, Okay. Um, one thing I have always been on this board, and it's always been a, I want to say a pet peeve of mine. Last year it was where I wanted the special, the contingency fund to be in a certain place. This year, I must thank Mr. Mrs. Botsford and Mr. McLiberty and the full board of education for approving the $300,000 special contingency fund. I think special education is a very misunderstood part of education and where it comes from. As a nurse, I have worked in it for many years. And I really think that if people looked at special education and what it does for a person, what it does for a family and everyone in the community, it is something that you really greatly could appreciate. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, thank you. We'll move on. Um, superintendent's report. Madam Chair, tonight it's just the personnel report and the board has received that. Okay, thank you. Um, comments from citizens? If you do have a comment, please state your name and the town you live in and I'll limit it to three minutes, please. Good evening, uh, Thad Burr, uh, 88 Sylvan Crest Drive, resident of Southbury since 1992, resident of Connecticut for 62 years. While I don't expect the board to change anything in the budget unless it's voted down at the upcoming referendum, I would like to go on the record with the following pertinent facts. The inflation in 2014, which is what we used the basis last year, was zero. The education budget increase was 2.45%. The inflation in 2015, all the way through the end of December was 0.7%. And in 
And if you count all the way through February of 2016, it was a total of 1%. The Board of Education request is 2 point, not 2.5, 2 point, five eight, almost 2.6%. The student population was 4572 in October 2006. It's now 3812. The cost per student has gone in that same time frame from $11,700 per student up to over $17,100 per student. That's a 46% cost per student while the inflation only increased 21% over that same time frame. And I'm not even going back and looking at 10 years or so back. It's it's even more dramatic. The demographics in this town, 70% of the households, myself included, have no children at this point. Yet we pay two-thirds of the education budget in this town. And the town budget suffers disproportionately because there's no money left over for the town. We have $1,000 to pay for all the parks other than the ball fields in the entire town for 70% of us that use them. Contrary to what some people have suggested here, house values in my neighborhood, at least, have continued to, de um, to decrease. And so voting for this budget doesn't really seem to have much impact on whether the house value goes up or goes down. Meaningful metrics. I appreciate some of the stuff that you put up there. The cost per student, the standardized test scores, graduation rates, acceptance rates at tier one and tier two universities. Um, I still maintain that when my son graduated in, in year 2000, the, the graduation rates at tier one and tier two schools were actually higher than they are this past year. And if you go back and look at that data. Uh, Cost-cutting measures. I mentioned this last year. We have some number less teachers, but I'm not sure that we have any less administrators. We had 42 as of last year. I didn't get a chance to look at it for this year. We have seven schools. We've lost almost 700 students, and we still have seven, seven schools. We're still paying for heating and upkeep and everything else on, on portable classrooms that are 40 years old. We have a teacher's contract. People say, well, it's only 2.4% increase. But what people don't understand is the teacher goes down the, the, the ladder here. Each year, they get an increase. Then they get a six-year teaching certificate. They get another. They go into another column. Then they get a master's degree. They go into another column. So if you take from the upper left corner of that contract that was signed in November and, and rubber stamped by the board, and you go to the lower right corner for a 30-year career, it's pretty impressive. It adds up to about 5% per year. And I'll tell you what, most of us in the civilian population are not getting a 5% pay raise each year. Um, the other thing is, I'm for fair and balanced. You know, I am for education. I've had a lot of education, and I, I appreciate the education. But there's many, many people, two-thirds of the population in this town are on fixed incomes. Last year, Social Security and um, uh, veterans' pensions, 0% increase. So all those people are on 0%. If you're investing money, you're lucky if you get 1%. If you go to the bank, you're going to get about 0.2%. And yet we're continually, over the years, we have averaged more than double. Over the last 10 years, we've averaged more than double the, the cost of inflation per student increase. I'm asking that people look at ways to really save money. $180,000 is 0.3%. It's like pocket change when you're talking about a $67 million budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please state your name and the town of residence. Three minutes. I'll keep it to that. But, uh, Mike Rosen, Southbury, and for the record, I'm here uh, as a resident and a parent. Uh, and a voter, not as a member of uh, the Board of Selectmen, though I am in Southbury. Um, first, just to, to clarify um, what I believe is some erroneous information, the numbers are more, six, in Southbury at least, I can't speak for Middlebury, are more 60-40, actually. Uh, 70 is, is high, and, and 40 would be the 70. It's 60-40. It's, it's not 70-30. It's, not it's, it's actually the other way around. It's 40-60, I should say. Um, so that, that, that's right. And, and fixed income doesn't also mean that you don't support continued investment um, both in your schools and your, in your community. Uh, I just want to thank the board. Um, for the first time in quite a long time, I believe we have an opportunity in both Southbury and in Middlebury to pass a budget that is reasonable and responsible with both towns voting yes and with a majority of this board, including members from both towns, supporting it. 
Um, so I just want to thank all of you, including the administration, uh, but all of you all for your hard work. I want to specifically thank Mr. Cookson for always being a voice of reason. Um, you have been in the time I've been here and coming to meetings, so I thank you for that. Um, and I just want to say, this is an investment in our town, not just for people who have kids in schools. Um, the one guarantee you have as a taxpayer in a town, the one guaranteed return on your investment is the money that's invested in your schools. Uh, I believe that this is a responsible and reasonable budget, budget that still is underfunding the education of our students. Class sizes are too high. We're going to need to address that at some point. Um, but I just want to thank the board and I want to thank the administration for putting forth a budget that the communities of Southbury and Middlebury will pass. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments? Good evening. I'm Christine Kubation, and I've been a taxpayer in Southbury for almost 20 years. I also would like to thank the administration and also the Board of Education for this budget that you've put together and the presentation tonight. Um, to quote Mr. Cookson, I agree that this budget is reasonable and responsible, and I thank you all for taking the time to um, look at all the pieces and try to bring it to a point where we could all agree with it. Um, I went to all of the um, workshops that we've had over the last three weeks, and I've learned a lot, and I think we've shared a lot of information, and I think we've done all that we can do. And um, I think I speak for a lot of people when I say I'm definitely going to support this budget, and I think a lot of other citizens out there will as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, being none. Um, we have no old business tonight, new business requiring board action. I need approval of, um, of new textbooks. Move that the Board of Education, upon recommendation by the Policy and Curriculum Committee, approves the new textbook, Campbell, Biology in Focus, as presented. Oh, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous, thank you. Uh, new business, oh, did it. Announcement of future meetings. Uh, Monday, April 4th, um, Policy and Curriculum Committee Committee meeting will be meeting at 6.30, is that correct? In the um, Media Center Conference Room. It'll also be the night of our public hearing, held in this room at 7.30. And then we will move in um, for a Board of Education meeting in this room following the public hearing. There we will be voting on the school budget. Uh, could I have a, uh, please have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>